Hey, welcome back. And thanks for joining me. And this is Tell Me a Story with Brother Mike. And I got a one for you today. I hope you like it. I mean, you know, I like to be able to tell you stories about stuff that happened to me. A lot of times it's years ago because now I'm 61 years old, so I can talk about years ago. And uh, as I mentioned before, I like to tell stories. You know, I get a lot of stuff off the internet, so sometimes I like to think I'm giving something back, you know. But I want to tell you a story uh, about when I was a cab driver in the city of Boston. I was a cab driver in the city of Boston for about three years, you know. Can't say that I loved every bit of it, but I can say that I had some thrilling times and uh, some boring times and. You know, the thing that I liked about it is you never knew where you were going to end up. You know, you just got in a cab, got out there, and people just took you places, you know. You get to meet a lot of different people. Some of the people you like, some of the people you don't like. This is a story about a guy that I definitely did not like, okay. It goes something like this. I got my cab early in the morning. You know, now when you're a cab driver, the first thing that you're thinking of is i got to get my rent. You know, back then in those days... You know, they were charging us, I think, like $37, $42 a day for the cab. You know, it's going to cost you. So the first thing he did was try to make the $37, $42, and then the rest of the day, all that money that you made was yours. You know, if you could get it before noon, you're in good shape, you know. So anyway, I started out pretty good. You know, got a fare. Uh, she was going to go to the airport. You know, single woman, uh, attractive, young, well-dressed, um, obvious professional. You know, we're on our way to the airport going down Commonwealth Ave. I'm going to take that left on Berkeley. And I noticed on the corner an MG smashed up. Notice a guy standing next to the MG. He's holding something up. As I get closer, I notice it's a police badge. Suddenly it, re uh, it dawns on me this guy is flagging me down. You know, I got the woman in the back. I'm like, well, I got a duty. So I pull over, he gives me the story, and I was chasing a suspect, you know, uh, you know, in this car here, and, uh, you know, he got away, and I smashed up the car, and I need a ride to, um, I don't know, some police station up in, like, Beverly or something, you know, so I'm like, hey, fantastic, I can drop her off at the airport, take this guy to Beverly, you know, get back in town, I got the lion's share of my, uh, you know, my rent. You know, and I'm I'm sitting pretty at uh, like 10, 30, 11 o'clock in the morning, you know. Don't want to let him get in the back with the girls, you know, so I put him in the front seat with me. And we take off, uh, you know, down um, uh, Storo Drive uh, on our way to the airport. This guy starts talking. As soon as he t turns towards me, all I'm getting is booze. Booze breath in my face, you know, it's like... 8.30 in the morning, this guy is like toast, you know, I'm like, oh, Christ, you know, then, then he totally ignores me, he turns around and starts like, you know, noticing the very attractive young professional woman in the back seat, you know, oh, he's got to tell her the story, he was chasing a notorious rapist, you know, that had raped a little girl, and, you know, da -da -da, he was hot on the trail, and, you know, the car smashed up, and, Da, da 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 this poor woman, you know, she's like trying to keep up the story, acknowledging him, you know, and I'm listening, and I can obviously tell that he's attempting to flirt with this woman in some kind of distorted way, you know, and so I want to get his attention back towards me, you know, and so, you know, we engage in a little small talk, and, uh, you know, all of a sudden, you know, his conversation takes a kind of weird turn, you know, and he's like, Hey, you know, uh, do you know where I can get a car? You know, and all this, and I'm, and I'm like, a car, you know. And then I notice him fiddling, you know, kind of like with his belt. And I look over there, and I see a pistol. You know, it looks like a little 32 pistol or something. And he's tucking it in between his legs, down by his crutch, you know. But he's holding on to the butt of it. And now my heart is kind of palpitating a little bit, you know. Got to admit it, I was smoking a couple of joints, you know. I always like to start my day, you know, with a little bit of uh, re relaxation, you know, before the fun begins. And uh, 
slightly toasted, you know? And I'm scared. And then he turns around and starts talking to the woman again. You know, talking all this filthy talk, nasty talk. And I can see she's scared, you know? And I'm like, oh my God, what am I going to do? You know, I'm the driver of this car. I have an obligation. This woman's my passenger. You know, thank goodness we had the petitions, you know? And um, so, you know, I remembered his comment about the car. And I says, hey man, uh, you know, when we get to the airport, I'll show you where they keep the rental cars before they wash them. The keys are still in them. You can just take one if you want to. You know, and he's like, yeah, okay, bro. You know, and all this, you know, because he was playing right into my plan. See, what I figured is, if this guy's a criminal, which he is, he probably thinks I'm a criminal, too, because I'm black, you know. And as we know, all blacks are criminals, all right? Okay. Or got some kind of latent crim criminality in it. So, yeah, I played into it, you know, and he's like, yeah, cool, you know. So I said, yeah, first, you know, let me drop her off, you know, where now we're through the tunnel, you know, we're coming down the ramp to the airport where the terminals are, you know, and so I pulls uh, up to the terminal, and in those days, in the trunk, all you had like a wire coming out of the back. If you want to open up the trunk, all you had to do was like pull the wire, and uh, what I'm afraid of is this guy is going to take my cab, you know, he, I might be on his victim's list, you know, so... Uh, I told him, I said, hey, man, wait here, you know. I, oh, first, she she took off. And I'm like, no, okay, we both get out of the cab, me and the woman. You know, she's on that side, I'm on this side. And I point down, and I, and I said to her, this guy's crazy. I said, you go into the terminal, and I'll pretend that you left your luggage, you know. So she bolts off into the terminal, and I, I poke my hand in the window, and I'm like, oh, shit, she left her luggage in the back. You know, I run around, I take my keys out of the ignition, can't take my car, you know, go around to the back, pop the wire, and I'm like, miss, you forgot your luggage, you know, and I use that as an excuse to run into the terminal. I bogart my way into the line, you know, there's people, this is way back when, you know what I mean, they didn't have all the security and stuff, you know. People waiting in line, you know, to buy their ticket, you know, cash. And uh, I, I'm butting in line, you know, I, I get up to the front of the line. And I look at the lady and I says, I'm a Boston cab driver. My cab is parked outside. There's a man in my cab right now and he has a gun. Can you call the police? And I'm telling you, you know, before I knew it, I turned around and he's at the kiosk for the rental car agency and he's in the process of convincing them with this police badge that he has you know that he's a cop and he's in distress and he's chasing this rapist and you know uh, you know I just observed him there and here comes the state cop you know you want to talk about a professional guy's a professional don't ask me how he knew or anything else but he walked up behind that guy, smooth as glass, and just p picked, pulled the gun right out from underneath his belt like he knew where it was. Disarmed the man, and just very quietly and non intrusively and without interrupting or flustering anybody, took that man away. I jump in my cab, and they had this pool, you know, where all the cab drivers would sit. You know, you'd wait for your next fare. I never played the pool. I always go back to town. But this day, I said, hey, man, I'm playing the pool because my heart was, like, palpitating. And, you know, as I was standing there after everything was over, you know, the woman, you know, who was apparently observing all this from afar, you know, kind of intercepted me on the way back to the cab, you know, and she grabbed me by the arm and... You know, she turned me around and she just says, you know, I just want to thank you so much. You know, you're my hero and you're the bravest man, you know, that I ever saw and this and that. And she gave me a very nice tip, you know. And then I told her, I said, say, if you really want to help me out, you know, call a company, you know, tell them, you know. So apparently she did because, you know, when I was sitting in the pool, I got a call on the PA system, you know, with the town taxi driver, you know, da-da-da, cab number, you know, and, uh, you know, look in the back seat, you know, it, apparently this guy told these cops that he's got some kind of credential, and he apparently left it in the back seat of the cab, and, um, 
I scoured the back seat, you know, did the best I could on his behalf. Maybe he was telling the truth. Maybe he's just a crazy cop, you know what I mean? But I didn't find anything. And, uh, you know, then they call my number. I go pick up these two old ladies at, like, TWA, you know, blue hairs. You know, they get in the back of my cab, and as I'm going through the tunnel, I can hear them in the back plotting to rob me. You know, I mean, you know, I'm thinking I'm having audio hallucinations of these people. These two old ladies ready to shake me down, you know what I mean? And I'm like, Mike, you know, you, you better take the rest of the day off because something apparently happened to you, and you're just not thinking with your right mind, you know? So I brought the cab back to the uh, company, you know, and I... And when I and on the way back, it was so funny because you know on the radio of the cab, you know the dispatcher who was like profiles in courage, you know I guess she called, you know, and he he was like you know acknowledging me, you know what I mean? And hey, when I got back in there, they were like, yeah, Mike, take the rest of the day off, you know, job well done, you know what I mean? So I I, I you know I I was a little bit scared, but you know I think I used every advantage that I had available to me, and uh, you know. Um, played her off against him and, you know, played to the criminal element, of, you know, that a lot of people think black people possess and, hey man, it worked, you know what I mean? And everybody ended up safe and sound and, and this crazy man ended up hopefully in jail, you know what I mean? And, hey, rack another one up for, uh, for me, right? You know, trying to do the right thing. So anyway, I want to thank you once again. Hey, I always enjoy being with you, telling you these stories. Uh, I know everybody ain't going to like every last one of them, but... Hey, guess what? Each one of them comes from the heart. And, uh, yeah, they're all directed to you. And uh, I want to thank you once again for joining me at, 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 at my little uh, time here. I call Tell Me a Story with Brother Mike.